everyone. Welcome to Edupedia World 9th Grade Computer Applications Video Lecture Series. I am Upeka Wendibona and this is the second part of Intellectual Property Rights. Under this episode we are going to cover Industrial Design and Geographical Indication. So what is an industrial design? An industrial design refers to an ornamental or aesthetic aspects of an article. A design may consist of three-dimensional features such as the shape or surface of an article or two-dimensional features such as patterns, lines or colors. Industrial designs are applied to a wide variety of industrial products and handcrafts from technical and medical instruments to watches, jewelry and other luxury items, from housewares and electrical appliances to vehicle and architectural structures, from textile designs to leisure goods. To be protected under most national laws, an industrial design must be new or original and non-functional. This means that an industrial design is primarily of an aesthetic nature and any technical features of the article to which it is applied are not protected by the design registration because those features could be protected by patents. Then you may be wonder why there need to be a protection for industrial designs. Industrial designs are what make an article attractive and appealing. Hence, they add to the commercial value of a product and increase its marketability. When an industrial design is protected, the owner, the person or entity that has registered the design, is assured an exclusive right and protection against unauthorized copying or imitation of the design by third parties. This helps to ensure a fair return on investment. An effective system of protection also benefits consumers and the public at large by promoting fair competition and honest trade practices, encouraging creativity and promoting more aesthetically pleasing products. Protecting industrial designs helps to promote economic development by encouraging creativity in the industrial and manufacturing sectors, as well as in traditional arts and crafts. Design contribute to the expansion of commercial activity and the export of national products. Industrial designs can be relatively simple and inexpensive to develop and protect. They are reasonably accessible to small and medium-sized enterprises, as well as to individual artists and craft makers in both developed and developing countries. So if someone want to protect his industrial design, how could he do it? In most countries, an industrial design must be registered in order to be protected under industrial design law. As a rule, to be registrable, the design must be new or original. Countries have varying definitions of such terms as well as variations in the registration process itself. Generally, new means that no identical or very similar design is known to have previously exited. Once a design is registered, a registration certificate is issued. Following that, the term of protection granted is generally five years with the possibility of further renewal in most cases for a period of up to 15 years. If you have a slight idea about copyrights, now you may be confused what is the difference between industrial designs and copyrights. Why we need two separate mechanisms? Well, actually, depending on the particular national law and the kind of design, an industrial design may also be protected as a work of applied art under copyright law. It is a much longer term of protection than the standard 10 or 15 years under registered design law. In some countries, industrial design and copyright protection can exist concurrently. 
in other countries they are mutually exclusive once owners choose one kind of protection they can no longer invoke the other under certain circumstances an industrial design may also be protectable under unfair competition law although the conditions of protection and the rights and remedies available can differ significantly so how extensive is industrial design protection Generally, industrial design protection is limited to the country in which protection is granted. The Hague Agreement concerning the International Registration of Industrial Design, a WIPO-administered treaty, offers a procedure for international registration of designs. Applicants can file a single international application, either with WIPO or the national or regional office of a country party to the treaty. The design will then be protected in as many member countries of the treaty as the applicant designates. So that's all about industrial design and now we are moving into geographical indications. So what is a geographical indication? A geographical indication is a sign used on goods that have a specific geographical origin and possess qualities or reputation due to that place of origin. Most commonly, a geographical indication consists of the name of the place of origin of the goods. Agricultural products typically have qualities that derive from their place of production and are influenced by specific local geographical factors such as climate and soil. So, for example, Tuscany for olive oil produced in a specific area of Italy. And also, the use of geographical indication is not limited to agricultural products. They may also highlight specific qualities of a product that are due to human factors found in the product's place of origin, such as specific manufacturing skills. The place of origin may be a village or town or a region or a country. For example, Swiss or Switzerland perceived as a geographical indication in many countries for watches made in Switzerland. The next question, why do geographical indication need protection? Geographical indications are understood by consumers to denote the origin and quality of products. Many of them have acquired valuable reputations which, if not adequately protected, may be misrepresented by commercial operatives. False use of geographical indications by unauthorized parties, for example, Darjeeling for tea that was not grown in the tea gardens of Darjeeling, is detrimental for consumers and legitimate producers. So the people are deceived into believing they are buying a genuine product with specific qualities and characteristics and the genuine producers are deprived of valuable business and suffer damage to the established reputation of their products. So now you may be wonder what is the difference between geographical indication and trademarks because you may perceive both are used for the same purpose. Actually, a trademark is a sign used by a company to distinguish its goods and services for those produced by others. It gives its owners the right to prevent others from using trademark. A geographical indication guarantees to consumers that a product was produced in a certain place and has certain characteristics that are due to that place of production. It may be used by all producers who make products that share certain qualities in the place designated by a geographical indication. Then there is another concept called generic geographical indications. If the name of a place is used to designate a particular type of product rather than to indicate its place of origin, the term no longer functions as a geographical indication. So, for example, the Jong mustard, a kind of mustard that originated many years ago in the French town of the Jong, has over time come to denote mustard of that kind made in many places. Hence, the Jong mustard is now a generic indication and refers to a type of product 
rather than a place. So, how does geographical indications protect it? Geographical indications are protected in accordance with national laws and under a wide range of concepts such as laws against unfair competition, consumer protection laws, laws for the protection of certification marks or special laws for the protection of geographical indications. So thereafter, unauthorized parties may not be able to use geographical indications if such use is likely to mislead the public as to the true origin of the product. Applicable sanctions range from court injunctions preventing unauthorized use to the payment of damages and fines or in serious cases, imprisonment. And then finally, what is the WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization's role in the protection of geographical indications? In a separate episode, we will discuss about WIPO in much detail. For geographical indications, WIPO administers a number of international agreements that deal partly or entirely with the protection of geographical indications, in particular the Paris Convention and the Lisbon Agreement. Meetings held by WIPO offer member states and other interested parties the opportunity to explore new ways of enhancing the international protection of geographical indications. And that's all for this lecture, part 2 of Intellectual Property Rights. If you can remember, from the part 1, we introduced what is intellectual properties and what is intellectual property rights. And also we discussed about two protection mechanisms, patents and trademarks. And this episode we discussed about industrial designs and geographical indications. So from that next lecture, the third part of intellectual property rights, we are going to discuss about copyrights and world intellectual property organization. Thank you for watching. See you from the next lecture. This video brought to you by edupediaworld.com. Watch more from our website.